So are rules the rules? Can we break them? Should we stick by them? Let's have a comment on that question. OK, um, firstly, as far as Douglas was saying about the politician side of things, Potentially, at the next election, there will be a half new intake of MPs. Now, if that then reduces down to 600, stays at 650, whatever, there will be at least another 300 MPs who are new to the system over the next four to eight years. Um, but coming back to Hazel's comment just now about the public are, it's like, disagree with the rules that are in place, I think that's not really showing the understanding of what the anger is. It's not the public disagreeing with the rules. The rules were wrong, but you don't seem to be acknowledging the fact that the rules were wrong. And for me, that's not showing the voters enough respect. Sorry. Okay, Douglas, you want to just... I mean, I was just going to say that I mean, the, the, the reason why the public are bemused is because most of us in our working lives have no system anywhere remotely like the system that has been uh, run by MPs. I mean, I run a, a, a small think tank. I em employ the people myself. I raise the money myself. If one of my staff... Uh, at the end of the month submitted, you know, a sort of five pound receipt for a sandwich <laughs> they'd eaten. I say, well, what, what's this? Well, I had to have my lunch. I say, well, well, of course you had to have your lunch, but uh, uh, why do I have to pay for it? Well, I, I had to eat. I mean, it just makes no sense. Nobody else has a system like this. Uh, it was, I think, Milton Friedman who said, uh, there are only two types of money. There's mine and there's yours. And uh, MPs have been spending our money. Uh, instead of their own. And I agree, there has been very little sign uh, of uh, repentance, as it were, to use an old-fashioned religious term, uh, uh, about it. And just one other thing, quickly, which is that the, uh, you're quite right, the number of new MPs in the next intake is striking, a huge influx of around half the House. We ought to be careful of this, though, as voters, and keep our eye on Westminster, because one of the things we're going to see, I'd argue, are very inexperienced, blank slate people who will come in, who will be perfect lobby fodder for the main parties. There's been a great example already, the election of Chloe Smith in, uh, in uh, Norwich. Uh, absolutely blank slate, perfectly nice young girl of 27, uh, fine but absolute lobby fodder for the party. And if we have half of Parliament simply being herded through the lobbies, no experience, nothing that uh, can, can add really to the mix, I think we're in for an even worse Parliament than before. We might actually look back at this one and think, oh, those were the days. <laughs> Hazel, we'll come, do you want to comment back on the gentleman's uh, point about... Uh, we just, just clarify as well to reiterate Douglas's point. So in theory, expenses, you could claim for everything in theory if the rules say so, but is it actually the moral purpose to do so? Well, and I think I did say, um, maybe I didn't make it clear enough, uh, that I thought that the rules were wrong and that's why they needed to be changed. Because uh, I entirely accept that and, and I don't think it's right simply to say everything was within the rules so it was okay, because clearly it wasn't. And there were things that were done that um, were absolutely wrong. And I think we should acknowledge that and acknowledge the public's anger uh, about what happened. Um, and certainly that was the reason why you know, I made my payment, not because it was due, but because I knew people were absolutely fuming mad. Uh, about what um, they saw, and that's why I, I took that step. You know, lots of people have said to me that made you then look guilty. Um, but equally, I, I wanted to acknowledge the fact that people, genuinely ordinary people, were absolutely incandescent about the situation, which is why I did it. So I did make that acknowledgement, and I understand that. Um, but I think, <laughs> in, what, in terms of what um, Douglas has just said about a, a naive 27-year-old girl being a blank canvas, um, I think that's... Um, have you spoken to Chloe Smith? I haven't spoken to her. Yeah. I have seen her. I have. Um, I have seen her. Now, now I, I, I do, I do I, know. I think, I think that's just a little bit about saying that 27-year-old girls somehow. I don't have anything against 27-year-olds. Well, well, I don't have anything well, against girls. Well, I, I, I do know Chloe Smith because she was a university friend of mine and Chloe Smith is a very strong-willed young lady who will be a fantastic member of Parliament. Well, well, how has she not? shown that so far? We have to move on now, gentlemen. <laughs> Give me a sign, a signal, anything.